My rod violet poppy was diagnosed with leukoencephalomyelopathy, LEMP, mid-July 2018, at two years old. Poppy's first symptom was knuckling. She would knuckle, especially when scenting and eating, and it was quickly getting worse. The first neurologist dismissed LEMP out of hand, despite her fitting the profile for the disorder in terms of the age of onset and symptoms. He performed x-rays of the neck and misdiagnosed atlanto-axial subluxation. The second neurologist I consulted 10 days later took spinal fluid to rule out inflammatory disease and confirmed LEMP through MRI and blood tests. Disease progression was fast and progressive for the first couple of months. Symptoms included increased knuckling in terms of frequency and duration, increased ataxia, including a stilted, uncoordinated and exaggerated gait, her front legs giving way, her backhand swaying sideways like a shopping trolley, and not being able to hold shoes between her paws anymore. But by far the worst was when she started dragging her hind legs oh, and falling sweetie. over from mid-August 2018, just two months after the onset of LEMP. She was falling over three to five times or so on every walk and F often needed help getting back up. The first year of her diagnosis, there were many a day, week, that I had to think hard whether it was right to keep her going. The few research papers available on this disorder showed that dogs were put to sleep within two to three months of diagnosis. They all suffered increased mobility issues similar to puppies and could not walk without falling down. But, as you can see from these video clips, despite her troubles, Poppy managed to motor on and enjoy herself. Good job. That's better. There are unfortunately no medications to cure or slow progression. But I can share with you some of the treatments and activities that I found benefited Poppy immensely. Initially, I was just looking to help her feel more comfortable and confident in her movements. But then I started seeing real measurable improvements, often after a treatment. Good job, well done. Good job, well done you. Good girl. By December 2018, six months after diagnosis, she was knuckling less and her front nails were starting to grow back. 2019 brought even more dramatic improvements. By the end of June, she was not knuckling at all and I have not seen her knuckle since. By the end of August, she was hardly ever dragging her back end or falling over. These improvements have been lasting. So far, 2020 has been a year of returning to almost normality. Her movements have become progressively more confident and fluent. Her depth perception has come back. She has relearned to gallop and jump. She is able to play without falling over. And there are moments where everything comes together 
and you just would not even think she has a neurological disorder. I made this video because there is so little information available about LEMP and what you can do to help your dog. If your dog is LEMP affected, please don't give up until you have tried physio, supplements and diet changes. For breeders, I would urge them to please test for LEMP and do not breed from pairs that both carry the gene mutation. If you are considering a Rottweiler puppy, it's worth checking that at least one parent is lamp free A responsible breeder will be happy to show you the parent's blood test results. And for vets, if an adolescent Rottweiler or Leon Burke presents with these symptoms, please consider run running a simple and cheap lamp blood test. You can then decide whether to refer on to a neurologist for MRI confirmation rather than going through a lengthy, expensive process of elimination. Thank you very much for watching.